recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Tuesday, 16th July 1895 Shankara The unseen cause or mass of subtle impressions leads us to sacrifice and worship, which in turn produce seen results. But to attain liberation we must first hear, then think or reason, and then meditate upon Brahman. The result of works and the result of knowledge are two different things. Do and do not do are the background of all morality, but they really belong only to the body and the mind. All happiness and misery are inextricably connected with the senses and body is necessary to experience them. The higher the body, the higher the standard of virtue, even up to Brahma, but all have bodies. As long as there is a body, there must be pleasure and pain, only when one has got rid of the body can one escape them. The Atman is bodiless, says Shankara. No law can make you free, you are free. Nothing can give you freedom, if you have it not already. The Atman is self-illumined. Cause and effect do not reach there, and this disembodiedness is freedom. Beyond what was, or is, or is to be, is Brahman. As an effect, freedom would have no value, it would be a compound, and as such would contain the seeds of bondage. It is the one real factor. Not to be attained, hurt the real nature of the soul. Work and worship, however, are necessary to take away the veil, to lift over the bondage and illusion. They do not give us freedom. But all the same, without effort on our own part we do not open our eyes and see what we are. Shankara says further that Advat Vedanta is the crowning glory of the Vedas, but the lower Vedas are also necessary because they teach work and worship and through these many come to the Lord. Others may come without any help but Advat. Work and worship lead to the same result as Advat. Books cannot teach God, but they can destroy ignorance, their action is negative. To hold to the books and at the same time open the way to freedom is Shankara's great achievement. But after all, it is a kind of hair splitting. Give man first the concrete, then raise him to the highest by slow degrees. This is the effort of the various religions and explains their existence and why each is suited to some stage of development. The very books are a part of the ignorance they help to dispel. Their duty is to drive out the ignorance that has come upon knowledge. Truth shall drive out untruth. You are free and cannot he made so. So long as you have a creed, you have no God. He who knows he knows, knows nothing. Who can know the knower? There are two eternal facts in existence, God and the universe, the former unchangeable, the latter changeable. The world exists eternally. Where your mind cannot grasp the amount of change, you call it eternally. You see the stone or the bas relief on it, but not both at once, yet both are one. Can you make yourself at rest even for a second? All yogis say you can. The greatest sin is to think yourself weak. No one is greater, realize you are Brahman. Nothing has power except what you give it. We are beyond the sun, the stars, the universe. Teach the godhood of man. Deny evil, create none. Stand up and say, I am the master, the master of all. We forge the chain and we alone can break it. No action can give you freedom, only knowledge can make you free. Knowledge is irresistible, the mind cannot take it or reject it. When it comes the mind has to accept it, so it is not a work of the mind, only its expression comes in the mind. Work or worship is to bring you back to your own nature. It is an entire illusion that the self is the body, so even while living here in the body, we can be free. The body has nothing in common with the self. Illusion is taking the real for the unreal, not nothing at all.